Hello, and we're back with Aquaculture Engineering. This is lecture seven. Uh, sorry, this is <laughs> number eight. And this will be another review of an important aquaculture species. And that would be on um, catfish. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to understand the uh, characteristics and production cycles of catfish. Learn the various uh, selection criteria in its production, identify environmental and water quality requirements of its production, and become familiar with the uh, cultural practices and other considerations in the um, overall production system. We'll be tackling uh, the Clarias batracus species, and that would be because uh, there are a lot out there. Even the pangaceous bee that we have uh, been talking about is actually a catfish species. And we'll be go going directly to the selection criteria and characteristics, after which is the production cycle. Uh, there are uh, particularly, I think, um, five, uh, four uh, families of concern in the uh, catfish. Uh, production system where the pangasi, the silurid, and the bragid and clarid. The claris batracus, that is the most common or commercially or marketable uh, species in the Philippines. That's why we are going to tackle that. And please consider again that there are variations uh, allowing for the choice of species or species if that would be a um, multi species system. Each species with the different selection uh, criteria and production cycle that which has to be considered. Um, will be will be uh, well. We're, we're going to leave the, the rest of the other species for you to uh, look into, and we'll have the basis of for that with the Clarias batracus. Uh, species. Uh, there are, well, given here are set six selection criteria and characteristics of uh, the Clarice Batrago species. And we start with the feeding habits or the nutrition. And we have number one, it is that, that is uh, omnivorous having a broad range of feeding habits at different life stages from the, from the uh, uh, larvae to the fry or fingerling stage. Okay. It feeds on smaller fish, mollusks, and other uh, invertebra, uh, inter invertebrates, also on the detritus and aquatic weeds. It grows rapidly to about 30 centimeters, having a maximum length of 50 centimeters and weight of 1.4 kilograms. A very considerable or a good characteristic of the, the species is that it's hardly intolerant to adverse environments and it's, it's, it's very adapted, uh, adaptable to, the, um, to most uh, tropical areas. That's why even it's called a pest species. It, also does adapt easily to intensive growing cultures and it easily breeds in the second year of its life. Again, he, in a, la, another <coughs> criterion that is considered in the selection of this species is that uh, besides the Philippines, it's also widely accepted in the Asian markets. So, which means that uh, there's, a, there's a possible exploration for uh, export besides uh, domestic consumption. For the production cycle, we begin with the adult, which as well, we've said already that it is already viable for uh, for spawning at age two years. So we now have 
uh, in the natural environment uh, where it, it, it can um, spawn in during the monsoon season uh, in, in, in the vegetation locations under embankments you can spawn 4,000 to 5,000 eggs and in two weeks these became this become larvae uh, at, and another four weeks these become fry so after which the fingerlings have to be already available by three to five months depending on the availability on the rotation and uh, again environment and the cycle goes on and on but the for for the aquaculture side, we take the adults in the grow-out tanks, and they yield also around four thousand to five thousand eggs. But a considerable uh, advancement here is the in, in, induce uh, induced ovulation and spawning, and also the collection of the uh, sperm from the male um, catfish. Uh, the larvae they are taken into hatchery tanks for two weeks there have been studies that they are already growing in nursery tanks but that is discouraged because of the uh, low progression in the growth also the mortality of the larvae uh, for fry you have four weeks again four weeks in the nurse nursery tanks and afterwards they are transferred into grow out tanks for the uh, fingerlings appear uh, in three to five months and the cycle again goes towards the uh, production of the adults for reeling of the eggs we now go to the environment and water quality uh, requirements for for catfish the species again tolerant. Well, we have already said that it's adapted adaptable to adverse environments. That's why it's very very tolerant for to low dissolved oxygen levels. Actually, it can breathe uh, atmospheric air very much like humans, and that's why uh, it can actually survive outside of outside water. But then again, we still have to read the ponds or, or the uh, aquaculture tanks to uh, avoid uh, stressing the animal. The optimal, the optimal protein requirement for of diet is between. 30 to 36 percent from fingerling to adult and we have the optimal larval stocking density at fry stage at um, 200 2000 uh, per m squared at 200 um, per m squared at in their fingerling stage and uh, from 30 to 60 per m squared uh, in the adults adult stage the optimal water temperature is 20 to 32 degrees. Uh, this is based on a reference uh, GVM 2015. And as the body weight increases, or pardon, uh, the, as the temperature increases, the body weight also increases. Uh, conversely, you have the reference from CABI uh, stating that the optimal temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, the catfish prefers shallow and highly vegetated water bodies in their natural habitat, and this could be um, mimicked in the aquaculture setup. It also tolerates high ammonia and nitrate, nitrate levels, which are considered uh, toxic um, uh, chemicals in, in water. And this is for, true for their adult stage but still they are susceptible to these uh, chemicals in the fry stage. The optimum pH range for the water is between 6 to 9.
for our cultural practices in the production of on the production system of catfish we have already talked we, we have already said the the uh, advances in induced uh, spawning of of the female eggs uh, this is done using human chorionic gonadotropin so the this this uh, hormone is injected to to the catfish and also with a specific drug called domperidon okay so you, you, this induces ovulation in the female and then it's, it spawns so uh in that case that there's uh induced spawning you'll have you need to have uh an available supply of sperm so there is also the cryopreservation of such using uh, a certain extender called HBSS, and this has been shown to have a hatching rate of around 90% based on studies. Uh, the genetic variability in various populations around uh, or in, in the natural habitat may actually help increase populations and also lower the risk of vulnerability of the species. Uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, from my opinion, is questionable because the species even considered a pest in some areas. Uh, increased feeding frequency lowers uh, the apparent protein digestibility, which just means that uh, the the animal has to be fed on a frequent um, on a frequent manner than just uh, having uh, feeding them at libitum. It means increasing also the uh, lipid deposition of of or the lipid deposition in the body. Last uh, cultural practice or or um, important consideration is that bovine lactoferrin, meaning it's from um, from from pigs, so this lactoferrin or LF is. Uh, added to the diet as a supplement and it enhances non specific immunity and disease resistance. Uh, in the next lecture, we'll be talking about uh, the carp and um, the carp and mudfish species. I'll be seeing you by then. <laughs>